Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at a Kurtzkazat video called The Most Dangerous Weapon Is Not Nuclear. Looks like it's on biological weapons. Let's see if I agree with this. A breathtaking scientific revolution is taking place. Biotechnology has been progressing at stunning speed, giving us the tools to eventually gain control over biology. On the one hand, solving the deadliest diseases, while also creating viruses more dangerous than nuclear bombs, able to devastate humanity. What's going on? Biotech capability. Those of you who are new to my channel, green glow means nothing good, <laughs> usually with nuclear stuff. <laughs> Biotechnology is increasingly everywhere. The cotton in your clothes, the vegetables you eat, your dog. Humans manipulate <laughs> living dog. things. We use bacteria to produce insulin, connect prosthetics directly with our brains, and make industrial enzymes to produce paper. Gene therapy creates cures to previously untreatable diseases while we're working on food crops resistant to climate change. That's cool. Our mastery over biology has been speeding up so much that within weeks of the first COVID-19 case, the unknown coronavirus was broken down in laboratories and analyzed. Scientists generated a copy of its genetic material to create a vaccine that was ready for testing months after. That's so impressive. I remember back in the 90s, any sort of genome sequencing project took like years or something like that. They'll probably talk about it. Pandemic began. Something unthinkable a decade ago. Where is all this sudden progress coming from? Well, it's complicated, but in a nutshell, really expensive things got cheap and knowledge of how to do yep. impressive things spread freely. The Human Genome Project starting in 19... Love it. You have more power, computing power at your fingertips than an entire lab did 30 years ago. T ...was the first major attempt to read human DNA in its entirety. 13 years and $3 billion later, it was complete. By then, the cost of decoding a human genome had fallen to about $100 million. Today, it's 1,000 times cheaper, costing only about $1,000. How is that possible? Converting DNA into computer data and then studying it used to be a super tedious process, taking expert humans around three years of manual work. Today, it takes about two weeks and is almost completely automated. Biotechnology has gone from directly related to the increase in our computing technology. Yeah, makes sense. Something restricted to the best and well funded laboratories staffed by the world's top experts to something affordable enough for hundreds of thousands of people to <laughs> casually work on. What sped up the process even more is that information in the field is shared widely and freely. Cutting edge discoveries now take just about a year to be copied in laboratories around the world, a few years for. Just like with open compute, open AI, all these open source technology sharing. Can you imagine open nuclear? <laughs> what do you think of open nuclear down in the comments below? <laughs> One with a biology background to work out and a bit over a decade for high school students to experiment with them in schools. Imagine that your local computer repair shop could build a pristine iPhone 11 with just the parts lying around and that teenagers are asked to build a new iPhone 5 for homework. Not a crappy homemade version, the real thing. This is what's going on right now in biotechnology, a true revolution. We are adding knowledge at unprecedented rates, while things get ever faster and cheaper to do. This speed means we can expect even more. All right, I see what they're getting at, this sharing of technology, but it could also be dangerous stuff that can cause the creation of some super virus or the next COVID pandemic or worse. Okay. things for humanity life-saving treatments, miracle crops, and solutions to problems we can't even imagine right now. But unfortunately, progress cuts both ways. What can be used for good can also be used for bad, by accident, or on purpose. What if you could build a nuclear bomb in your backyard? I'm not going to tell you how to do that, guys. Sorry. <laughs> what all the good biotech will do for us, in the near future, it also could easily kill many millions of people, in the worst case, hundreds of millions. Worse than any nuclear bomb. The world just witnessed how fast the novel coronavirus spread. We still don't know. 
Yeah, no single nuclear bomb would do anywhere close to that. Um, you would have to strategically detonate them in very highly populated areas um, and all at once. For sure if it came from nature or was the result of an accidental leak from a lab working with coronaviruses, that's still subject to scientific debate. In the I do like they're using green glow for uh, bio stuff as well as nuclear stuff. That's, that's the overlap in these little animations. <laughs> at least 7 million people died. And this was still a relatively mild virus that didn't cause serious disease in most of those infected. But that might change in the future. Where well, that's part of why it was so deadly is because it wasn't very serious and it could spread everywhere. So people that were vulnerable to it will die. So in a way, it's actually paradoxically the less deadly disease um, can actually kill more people because the deadly one will just burn itself out too quick. Where the last pandemic came from, the next one might very well be our own fault. In a sense, many things going on in biotechnology could lead to this. Most of all, how easy it is to... How did it get in the guy's suits? Wow. <laughs> it's like alien blood or something. ...work with dangerous viruses. Hmm. Thousands of scientists can simply order the genetic data of infectious virus samples online to experiment with them. Assembling oh. these into an artificial virus... Open virus. ...23 costs about as much as a new car, including all the lab equipment. At the same time, other scientists are trying awesome. to find viruses that hide in nature, like in wild bats or monkeys. There are probably What if you could make a nuclear device for the same price as a car? To give you a sense, the one piece of monitoring equipment costs about as much as a new car for nuclear stuff. There are plenty of potentially deadly pandemics out there. That's at the low Virus end. hunters take samples back to the lab to learn whether the newly discovered viruses are likely to spread in humans and catalog the danger. When a biologist discovers a new virus, they usually publish its genetic data to the public. Journals are eager to share descriptions of potentially dangerous viruses. Other labs go further and make viruses more dangerous. They combine and mutate different viruses to understand which mutations make them more likely to spread between humans or make them deadlier than their original forms. And again, hmm. these results are shared freely. All while synthetic DNA and equipment to rebuild these viruses are sold online to anyone without any or very little tracking. As the tools of bio- I wonder if that's really true about the uh, super deadly stuff. You'd think you'd need at least some type of clearance or authentication to get your hands on that information. Technology get ever cheaper and easy to use, and the data on dangerous viruses keeps multiplying, it's only a matter of time before a well-meaning scientist shares blueprints for the equivalent nuclear bomb of viruses, a superbug that will cause millions of deaths, and someone uses it. Maybe because they have bad intentions, maybe because they're irresponsible or sloppy. We're creating an environment in which it's increasingly easy for anyone to create a weaponized virus in their backyard. This is scary. The world would be plunged into an unending crisis as new pandemics pop up year after year or all at once killing large parts of the world's population. So I think the real danger here is the lack of regulation, whereas nuclear bombs are so difficult to produce because getting access to even the fundamental materials, um, the raw materials such as uranium and plutonium is challenging. Getting access to the, um, the massive facilities that you need to process this requires millions if not billions of dollars and specialized equipment that is only made in certain parts of the world. So based on that, I can understand the argument more of why they think this is more dangerous than, than nuclear weapons, just because it's a lot easy for, you know, Joe Schmo to make one in his shack. Doing unimaginable damage to civilization as a whole and possibly undoing centuries of progress. What can we Worst do? case scenario. Turns out, a lot. <laughs> It's not the first time we've faced a challenge like this, and we are not helpless. Think of nuclear technology. Something extremely dangerous with huge upsides and downsides. Nuclear energy was born from weapon programs, so its creators were always aware of the potential for their knowledge to be abused. From the very beginning, it was clear that knowledge in this field and access to the technology needed to be handled with utmost care. That is a very interesting point, and... Probably one of the reasons why, you know, there's this all these non-proliferation treaties in place for not just nuclear uh, nuclear weapons, but certain aspects of nuclear technology, and that's why it's so heavily guarded. Good point. 
So a lot of effort has gone into making sure no radioactive material disappears from site or that countries don't try to hide weapons development behind energy programs. The result. So the Vela incident is a flash um, picked up by a satellite in South Africa that um, no official explanation has ever been given, but it is thought to have been a nuclear explosion in South Africa. It hasn't been perfect, but considering the 411 nuclear power... Surprised they didn't make North Korea an example. That one's a bit more subtle. <laughs> ...stations running today, we've been very successful. Likewise, no researcher would think to share data on how to turn common laboratory equipment into bomb-making machines on the internet. There's no reason we couldn't handle the really dangerous aspects of biotechnology in a similar way. Experts have come up with three sort of bullet points. Hmm, here we go. First, we need to delay the next deadly pandemic by getting a grip on how we treat dangerous viruses. Their genetic data should be treated as an info hazard. Information that poses a hmm. danger to society if it's shared without care. In other words, not just anyone should be able to order dangerous DNA online. And if you do, you should be tracked so it becomes much harder for the wrong people to access the really spicy stuff. Just like how to make the nuclear The next work. step is detecting the data which viruses are present among us and are spreading explosively between humans. This could be as easy as having labs in population centers maintain virus detectors that monitor what's going on in the micro world. If we suddenly see certain microorganisms show up a lot in a short time, we can react quickly and start countermeasures. Which is the final step, destroy. We basically need to build a machine that's ready to destroy any pandemic threat before it has a chance to take over. We can do this with new tools that are being developed cool. right now, like nanofilters that pull dangers out of the air we breathe, or specialized UV lamps that just kill any virus before it has a chance to jump from person to person. And of course... Remember those during COVID? We need to get better at getting new vaccines faster than ever before in history. If we do these three things, the chances are really good that we can avoid a catastrophic pandemic in the future. Biotechnology, like any... That's an interesting point. With this rapid technology thing, not only would it be easier to make new super viruses, it would be easier to make cures for super viruses. So we could end up in a situation like with computer viruses where the hackers both make the diseases and make the vaccines so you buy their products that's a bit less of a terrorist and more of a an evil money grubbing mindset <laughs> exciting and powerful technology is neither inherently good or bad it has the potential to be both in breathtaking ways just like we anything have the else chance to have a future where we get to truly control biology just like nuclear and yeah just like a just like a hammer, you could build a house with it, or you could hit someone on the head with it. Our biology. The biology of the plants and animals around us, and the biology of the micro world. So, let's use it to create a future where we triumph over pandemics and diseases for good. Cool. This video was supported by Open Philanthropy. If you want to have a high impact on the world, check out the BioRisk Career Guide from 80,000 Hours. A non prop That's cool. It's from Something I'm not actually familiar with, that little um, advertisement. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Do you think nuclear weapons are still more deadly than biological weapons? And what about more dangerous? Do you think um, the all the safeguards around non-proliferation make nuclear less dangerous than um, biological weapons. Note that I mean nuclear weapons, not nuclear power. We all know nuclear power is super safe. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.